those of you who are just joining us, welcome. I, I think I see Hema and um, I don't know, maybe another new one popped in there. Uh, go ahead and type into the chat one word to say how you're feeling. And it's totally okay to say depressed, bro. Like n being depressed right now is normal. Like really, we're living in a historic, unprecedented, scary time. So yeah. if, if you write into my chat, you know, anxious, uh, freaked out, um, afraid, like whatever, sad, depressed, I would be like, right on. That's I, I recognize all of those feelings right now. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's also okay to be happy. I, I'm pretty good. I'm okay. I still have my job. You know, I have a roof. I have my health. Like, there's a lot that I'm too grateful for right now. Mm. Wow. Well, Mark, I think we'll start. People can come in. I'm just going to say a few words about you because you're probably too modest or embarrassed to say these yeah. wonderful things about you. Um, Take your head. And, then, and then you're on. So as many of you know, Mark Schulte has been teaching at Hillcrest in the Academy of Visual and Performing Arts for seven years and has taught theater and anything having to do with theater, you are the man. Uh, because you have a long freelance career since 1984 doing TV, theater, film, television work, and a lot of voiceovers. And for people who don't know what voiceovers are, um, it's quite interesting to know there are people who appear on the media, on TV, and we never see them, but we hear their voices, whether they're um, you know, selling us toothpaste or they're somebody on a show. So you must have um, done quite well with that. And you've been in movies. And one of the things I'm noting here with great excitement is in New York, there's a law and order rule. If you're an actor or in performance of any sort, you have to appear on law and order or some of those kinds of shows that are filmed here. And they're always filming, or at least they used to, always filming in my neighborhood on the Upper West Side. And I, I always recognize buildings they've used. Um, you've also done a lot of on-camera film. Um, a couple of these uh, you, you'll mention as you wish. And you also have quite a background with uh, Mr. Shakespeare here. And it, I'm very impressed about a fun fact that you told me, which is you acted the entire Marlovian canon and memorized the role of Prospero in The Tempest in three days. And that's a lot of words to memorize. So you're a smart dude. Um, anyway, you also teach, um, you teach in, teach an, in, in, in the small academy, academy, in one of the academies at a larger school, but it sounds to me like you've reached hundreds and hundreds of students, and I am very, very happy to introduce you to all these people who already know you, but just so you get the, um, the weight and experience of Mark Schulte on stage, screen, and most importantly, in your classrooms. Many of you have taken classes with him over the years and done performances. So take it away, Mark. Thank you very much, Sheila. What a gracious introduction. I really appreciate that. Um, first of all, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming to the Masterclass at the Knowledge Project. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about public speaking. <laughs> I know one of the, believe it or not, it lands in the top five fears. Like if you just measure everyone in the, on the planet and you say, what are you afraid of? You know, death. Um, but apparently public speaking is a lot higher on the list than you think. So we're going to try to tackle some of that. You can answer any of those three questions in the chat if you haven't. Um, but don't feel like you have to. I just wanted to get a vibe for how you guys were feeling. Um, we're going we're gonna to go right into it here. Um, first thing we're going to do is go around the room and everyone's going to say their name. So, um, so I'll start. And then, uh, I, I guess the, probably the best thing to do is since we don't know who, what order anyone goes in, um, just wave your hand once the camera will, you'll see the little yellow highlight come around your box. And when you have the yellow highlight, go ahead and say your name. So I'll start Mark Schulte. Mark, does everyone have video on? Because I don't see because oh, well, okay, then let's just go round robin. Just say your name, and if you say it with somebody else, 
fix fix it and whoever's open say it and then the next person say it so if we run into each other no big deal so i'll start again mark schulte my name is miles i'm in a poorly lit room that's why my camera's not on uh brandon rodriguez felicia, felicia williams uh, hello i'm anthony garcia Hello, I'm Yonet Clark. I am Kate Newman. Hi, I'm Sheila Lewis. Hi, I'm uh, Matt Black. Hi, I'm Erica Dakota. I'm Meg Hannibal. I think we've got everybody for the moment. One more, I didn't hear from Hema. Ah, uh, Hema. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ara Pentecoda. Oh, there you go, Hema. Is, oh, I'm sorry, Ara. I didn't realize Hema was also Ara. Thank you. Ah. Very, uh, you, you guys did a really great job with that. Normally when I do that, I get like, you know, four or five students who um, like say something like, oh yeah, my name's um, Mark Schulte. <laughs> like with a big question mark on it, like they don't know what their name is. And actually the only person who did that in this call was my very good friend, Matthew. Matthew, thank you for being here. And thank you for saying your last name with a slight question mark on it so I could make that point. Um, yeah, so names matter and how you say your name matters, especially in a group, uh, especially in a public sphere. If you're at the front of the room, you want to assert your name but you don't want to be a Richard about it, right? You don't want to just be like kind of aggressive, but you also want to be really clear and strong and pronounce it really strongly, right? So uh, your name does matter um, and how you say it matters. So practice that, right? Mark Schulte. I've, I've practiced it a billion times because when you go to auditions, you have to slate, right? Uh, if it's a commercial audition and they're going to use your hands, you have to hold your hands up next to your face and say, Mark Schulte like that, right? So, uh, and I never got those jobs because of that ET finger, but you know, um, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, there's a little extra credit assignment there for you guys. I'll give you all a really good grade. I'm just kidding, you're not getting graded, you know that. But, but um, yeah, find out what your name means. Find out where it came from. Find out how you got it. And then do the literary etymology of it. So you really know the deep history of your name. If you haven't done that yet, why not do it? It's a name you're gonna carry with you for the rest of your life, right? Okay, good. Let's move on. Um, so what is, well, what is public speaking? Well, by the end of this session, you'll be able to do these things. Warm up vocally and mentally prior to speaking and performing. Regulate the five technical elements of public speaking. Effectively mitigate your stage fright or your anxiety. And finally, say your name, <laughs> which most of you actually did really well. Um, so what are the five technical elements of public speaking? Well, they're right there. Breath, enunciation, pitch and inflection, volume, tempo. Those are the five elements. And right now what you're saying to me is, but how can we we can't, you, you can't see me? You don't see me on camera right now? No, uh, I'm not seeing you, I don't know if others, I'm seeing nothing but the um, print, you know. Well, I, have my video, I have my video on, Sheila. Switch your view to um, gallery view. Oh, up, okay, I'm sorry. Right, and, and you should be able to see I have, well, so, I have standards. How, okay, I'll try it. Yeah, how? I, I, okay, so we can't see anybody else, okay. At some point, we yeah. Can, we can. So, um, so how do you remember the five technical areas? You use something uh, from the goddess Mnemosyne. Uh, Mnemosyne is the goddess of memory, and you use something called a mnemonic device. That first M is silent, just to fool you. And what is a mnemonic device? Well, it's a, just a trick. It's just a way to remember something. So, how do I remember the five parts of public speaking? Well, I just remember the vibe, right? You got your tempo. 
you got your volume, you've got your inflections, you've got your breath, and finally, your enunciation. Enunciation. Yeah, how clearly are you articulating the sounds in the words? Yeah, those are your five elements of public speaking. Now, how would you go about working on them individually? You can do. I can break it down and we can work on each one of those individually. We don't really have time for that tonight. So what I'm going to say to you is this. I have found that all five of those get better when you practice your speech. They organically get better when you practice your speech over and over. Obviously, if we had the time, I could go long form and really work on each one of those things. What happens when you increase the tempo? Or when you adjust the volume a little bit? What, what happens to people when you do that, right? What happens when you, you know, uh, uh, use an upward inflection at the end of a line, right? It, things happen to the speech when you use these elements. Um, and we'll go into that more and more, but I just want you to know that by if you have a speech to do and, and you're thinking, oh God, how am I gonna ma manipulate all these different elements? Don't, just organically work on that speech and get it to sound the way you like it. And what will happen is all five of these will get better. Now, if you schedule a session with me, I will absolutely be like, that's the wrong inflection on that word. You're gonna go up, not down. You know, you're gonna do this. You got, I, I can break all this down, but we really don't have time for that tonight. But that's how you remember it. You remember the vibe, the vibe, right? So what do great speakers do, right? Well, they prepare for speaking. If you fail to prepare, you are preparing to fail, right? That's true. That's always been true and it will still be true forever. So they prepare. What else do they do? They know their text. They memorize it if they can. They warm up vocally and mentally. They read the room. They know who they're speaking to, right? You've got to know your audience. If you know that you're speaking to a bunch of three-year-olds, that's going to change how you do your speech, right? Same thing. You've got to know who you're talking to. You want to listen and respond to the group dynamically. No speech exists in a vacuum. You're in that room with those people, or in this case, I'm in my dining room and you guys aren't, but we're here in Zoom room together, right? So I have to listen and respond to you. And then finally, relax and use the five learned techniques, right? The five techniques we, we just went over, right? What are they again? Oh, right, the vibe, tempo, volume, inflection, breath, enunciation. You can remember that. Good. Um, Moving on. So what is a vocal mental warm up and what does that kind of thing look like, right? Um, so one of the first things you want to do is, uh, as every great speaker knows, you need tea and lemon. And uh, if, you, if you need a spot of honey, if your throat is scratchy, the idea is you want the larynx relaxed and moistened, right? So that's very important. Um, after that, you have a, a, a million things you can do. If you're in a group, you're going to start with the name game, with the zip, zap, zop, zing, pow, boing. Those are all group warm-ups that help you get ready. But if you're just on your own, you use the whole list down below. Tongue twisters, right? Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Uh, projection exercises, right? This is where you, uh, you use the technique of calling, yeah? This is where you put the sound into the front of your mask, it sounds like this. Ho, oh, oh no, Joe, don't go. Right? Putting that sound way up in the front of your voice and getting your whole face to vibrate with the sound of that. It's like a ho, oh, oh. ho. The throat's very wide open and the breath is pushing the sound into the front of your mask. Um, that's a projection exercise. That's how you reach the back of the stage. I mean, the back of the house from the stage. Uh, focus and mental acuity exercises. These are things like, um, you know, where you, you try to like, like a really good one doing on your own count to 33, but don't say any number that has a three in it or is a multiple of three. Instead, you must clap on those numbers. So it's like one, two, four, five, seven, eight, 10, 11, 15, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20, 22, 20, 
four, ah, 25, 26, 28, 29, done. So, so you see, I messed up like three or four times in there, right? That was because my brain ain't ready yet. <laughs> you got to get your brain ready. Um, and, and that's a math brain there, but it's any waking up your brain to work is super important. Um, and then, yeah, uh, can I get a volunteer to just read that, uh, that, that whole thing from state of mind down? I'll do it. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Miles. Uh, the state of the mind you are aiming for is often referred to as Zen. You are present, enlivened, sensitive, and resonant, quickened and ready to respond to the text, the audience, and your fellow performers. This is sometimes also called being in the zone. Your larynx is moistened and relaxed, tea and lemon with honey. Uh, some days you need to wake up your body, other days you need to calm it. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Miles. Yeah, so uh, th this is basically a little primer on how you might warm up your, 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 your brain and your larynx. Uh, those of you who work with me know this tongue twister. Um, actually, uh, uh, Anthony Garcia, are you still on the call? Of course I am. C can you, uh, can you <laughs> try to recite this? I know you've never done it before. <laughs> Can you do it in one breath? Okay, let me. I it's. I need a. All right, I, I'm gonna try it. All right. Sure. <laughs> what it to do to die today at a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. For they'll beat a tattoo at twenty to two, a rat a tat a tat a tat a tat a two, and a dragon will come when he hears the drum at a minute or two to two today at a minute or two to two. You. <laughs> Excellent job. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. I like this one because it really gets the tip of your tongue loose, right? Different exercises for different parts of your mouth. Remember, this job of speaking is incredibly technical. It, you know, to make a g is the back of your tongue up against the soft palate. To make a t, it's the front of your tongue up against the front of the hard palate. So literally breaking these sounds down and trying to get, get all parts of your mouth and throat working are really important. I should say a, a word about alignment. If I'm trying to make a sound and I got my neck like that, I've already stretched my larynx, right? You wanna be relaxed, your head wants to be floating on the top of your spine, and you want no tension in this area, even when you're really raging, right? You wanna keep it loose here, right, so that you can. Um, thank you, Anthony, that was great. So uh, I have a million of these tongue twisters. I try to, if I'm working with the same group of kids, I try to, um, you know, vary it from night to night. Uh, so here's the, here's the big reason that you're all here. I know. I know why you're here. <laughs> no. um, yeah, this is uh, what if I get stage fright? I mean, honestly, have you guys ever heard of a comedian named Carol Channing? She was great. I mean, she was fabulous. She had one of those little weird lists like this. She had kind of a shovel and ash, and she, but she was so funny and a great singing voice, great dancer. Um, yeah, she was uh, a, a Broadway star for a long time. She threw up every single night before she went on stage. Literally, there was a bucket in her dressing room for the purpose. She had horrible stage fright. You're not alone if you're afraid to get up in front of people or if it feels like it's really hard. Everyone feels it. So what should you do about it? You should focus on your breathing. If you're really nervous, go ahead and just count. In, out, two, three, four. In, out, two, three, four. And yeah, try to lengthen it and calm yourself by the breath, just by focusing on the breath. Practice your tongue twisters. Do relaxation stretches, right? Just bending over and, and stretching or stretching your legs. Any, any kind of stretch to take it your, your head out of your head and into your body. Uh, and then finally, remind yourself of the tech five, of the vibe. Remind yourself of the vibe, right? Tempo, volume, inflection, breath, and enunciation. Good. Um, let's move on, shall we? The speech, okay. So everything begins and ends with your text, right? So, and, and remember, uh, extemporaneous speaking is completely different, right? Speaking off the cuff, that's very different from making a speech. 
that you have a text for. So far, the stuff I've been talking about is making a speech that you have a text for, right? And if you do have a text, then what you want to do is mark that text up, yeah? So you're gonna come up with your own system of marking. I have one that's pretty simple. You can see when I wanna go up in pitch or inflection, I draw that little arrow up over the word. When I wanna stop, when I wanna pause, I put a slash through the line. When I wanna emphasize a word, I underline it. When I wanna take a breath, I put a B. Yeah, so in, in about 30 seconds, I can take a script and mark it up. And then when I go to read, all I have to do is sort of generally follow my signs. The ones that are most important are where are you going to pause? Like, where are your breaks? Um, where are your breaths? And then the ends of lines. Are you going up? Are you staying flat? Or are you going down? Yeah, with your inflection. And, you know, it, it really does matter. It changes the whole speech. Um, and, so, and, this, and what this does, too, is that if you're, not, uh, if you're not memorized, this helps you deliver a speech with power, even if you're not fully memorized on it, by marking up the text. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I took this. I don't know if anybody knows this. This is um, uh, William Butler Yeats has a poem called The Lake Isle of Innisfree. And that's this poem. And I'll go ahead and try to read it. I do not have the poem memorized. Um, I'm going to try to read it for you now using just the symbols that I have on this paper to tell me what to do. The Lake Isle of Innisfree. All right. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings, their midnights all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now for always night and day. I can hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. As I stand on the roadways, or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart's core. <laughs> I love that poem. <laughs> I love that poem because it, um, oh, thank you, yeah. No, I, I love that because it, um, it sounds like lake water the whole time. <laughs> it's got the rhythm of lake water waves lapping gently. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's my suggestion is to to go ahead and take uh, take a shot at marking up scripts that you need. So how many sounds? Are, so if this is all about sounds and producing sounds, how many sounds are there in English? Well, if you guessed 40, you were right. There are 40 phonemes in English. 26 letters make 40 sounds, right? These sentences purportedly carry all 40 sounds. So how well can you say them? We're gonna go around the room, everybody's gonna pick one or the other and go ahead and try and enunciate it to us, yeah? So um, don't, don't feel like you have to rush or anything, take your time, but uh, we'll go around the room, everybody will get one shot at one of those sentences. So pick one, practice it a couple times right now. You can even turn your mic off and practice it out loud if you want. Um, yeah, so I'll take the uh, I'll take the top one. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, the churlish whale, and madly started vending and quacking. <laughs> the one that my college professor used had something to do with rainbows. There are many colors in the rainbow. I can't remember the rest of it. It was thirty years ago, people. Well, actually, forty. But, but who's, who's old AF? Okay, do I have a volunteer to take a sentence and try? 
I'll attempt one. I'll try one. Yeah, Brandon, take one and go for it. Uh, I'll take the second one. Okay. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth-moving headgear? Well done. Well done. You you didn't quite ask a question with it, but you you you, you nailed the pronunciation. Yeah, I messed up on the questioning towards right? the end. So how do you make that into a question at the end? What do you do? More drop my tone. You, you, it's literally the eye from T vibe. You have to adjust the eye, which is inflection, right? Uh, so you go up, right? At the end of a question, when we ask a question in life, I'm like, hey, hey, Brandon, um, where are you going on vacation? Like it goes up, right? It goes, it's yeah. Like it goes up at the end. Yeah. Good. Nice job, Brandon. Who else? Um. Uh. uh I think I'll do the first one. Great, Hima. Go for it. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbering crab, the churlish whale, and madly started vending and quacking. Well done. The only thing I would ask you to do next time is connect kind and zingy a bit quicker. Um, uh, uh, but uh, the rest of that was just beautifully enunciated, uh, Hima. Good job. Who's next? I'll go. Uh, I'm going to do the second one. Great. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chops, or jolly mo earth moving headgear? <laughs> Good. Good. I, wa I want to know what earth moving headgear looks like. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you did something that I do all the time, Miles. You, you, when we're reading out loud, especially strange text, um, we're, we're a little bit anxious about it. So our eyes are, are reading ahead and our voice is following behind a few words and you actually moved one of your phonemes into, uh, into an earlier spot in the line, right? Think about what reading is, right? You're just literally decoding these phonemes and then saying them. And remember the graphemes, what, what the words look like is very different from how they sound, right? Mm -hmm. Grapheme and phoneme are different. So you did a thing there, Miles, for a quick second where you got a, a glottal G in there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which I've done a billion times because your eye was just a little ahead of your um, of your your mouth. But uh, I really liked the uh, energy in your reading. Uh, uh, I could tell you were committed um, to the words and actually asking the question, right? Which is important. This is always a good, uh, what I call signpost in your speech. Gabby, are you going to go? That's great. Uh, give me one second. When you're in a signpost, um, uh, I mean, uh, what is a signpost for you in a speech should be your questions. If you have a question in your speech, make sure you ask it. If you go through your speech and you're not asking that question, now even in the moment, even in front of the crowd, you can be like, oh, somehow I'm not connecting to the text because I just had a question and I didn't ask it. I went through it without asking it. So what does it sound like? So how many sounds exist in English? That's not a question, even though it's a question mark. I got to say, how many sounds exist in English? That's a question, right? So make sure you're asking your questions. Okay, Gabby, go for it. Pick one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gabby? No? Oh, it looked like you were ready to speak. Uh, you fooled me. Uh, let's see, uh, Yonette? I'm really sorry. Oh, did you have it on mute? <laughs> yeah, I had it on mute and I realized my camera is off. Bro, so do you bad. know how often I do that when I'm teaching? My students would be like, they let me go for three minutes and then they're like, yeah, mister, you're on mute. I'm like, really? You, you yeah, couldn't I'm so sorry. I'll read the first one. <laughs> yeah, go for it. The hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind. Zingy fox. The jabbering crab the trilldish whale, and madly started bending and quacking. Beautiful, beautiful. You guys all have such beautiful voices. I would say the same thing to you, Gabby, that I said to Hema. Just get rid of that comma between kind and zingy. You know, you said ate the kind, zingy fox. That, 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 that pause was long enough that I'm like, ate the kind. It ate what? <laughs> you you got to connect those two. But other than that, it was really well done, well enunciated, well spoken. Who's next? I go next. Yeah, sure, Anthony. 
All right, I'm going to break our little tradition of going, of alternating between both of them, because I really want to do the first one. Um, the hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind Ziggy Fox, the jabbering crab, the churlish whale, and madly started vending and quacking. <laughs> well done, sir. Well read, well read. Uh, so, you, you know, you're applying all the five things we're talking about, but you're doing it organically, and it's really beautiful. Um, who else did we, we didn't hear from everybody? There's a few other people on this call. Maybe, uh, let's see. I'll do, I'll do one. Oh, I'll thank you so one. much. I was just going to call on you. <laughs> the hungry purple dinosaur ate the kind zingy fox, the jabbing crab, the chap the childish whale and madly started vending and cracking. I'm sorry, I probably messed up. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. Remember, these are particularly difficult to say because they have all 40 phonemes. So you're really giving your, your apparatus a workout to get <laughs> those out properly. And right. they also don't really <laughs> make sense, much, right? They, yes. <laughs> But, but very well done. So if you notice, you could hear, or I could hear, um, slight accents in each one of your uh, uh, speech, right? There's a, a, a like a Anthony's, you know, pronunciation had a tiny bit of the Delaware water gap in it. Uh, Felicia, yours had a tiny bit of like Queens, Brooklyn? Is that Brooklyn? I'm, I'm from Manhattan, New York. <laughs> Manhattan, okay. Tiny bit of Manhattan in there then. Because I could hear it just in the, like in your R's and stuff, right? And that's fine. You, you, you don't have to erase that when you speak. Ultimately, you want to be in control of it, though. Okay. Ultimately, you want to be the one who decides if you sound like you're from Manhattan or if you sound like you're from, you know, Minnesota, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> You That's totally get to decide, dude. You totally get to decide if you're from the valley or not. You know what I mean? It's like really awesome. <laughs> no, it is. It's like people think of you completely differently when you talk that way. They just do. I mean, it's just like, wow. Oh, my God. He sounds like that? Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, people will be judging you based on those things. So you really want to be able to code switch is the idea, right? You want to be able to sound like whatever you want them to think, right? Good. Well done. Let's, uh, I don't know if we got to everybody. Is there anybody who's dying to read one of those and didn't? I'll go next. Oh, great. Go for it, Yona. Okay. The hungry purple dinosaur at the kind zinging fox. The jabbering crab, the churlish whale, and madly started bending and quacking. Well done. Um, I, 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 really well done, especially because I'm guessing that English isn't your first yet language, Janet. Is that right? No, it is. Oh, it is I'm, your first language. Yes, I'm from Guyana. Ah, and do you speak any other languages, Janet? No, I don't. Ah. Fascinating. Okay, so you have just the Guyanese accent behind your English, that's all. Yes, I do. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I hear this one a lot at Hillcrest. We have a lot of kids from GTE and, you know, outer areas in Guyana. Okay. Um, and I, I, I have a great love of, uh, I don't know, I grew up in a, in, a, in a small town in Minnesota, and my very first uh, friend who wasn't white, uh, was named Rupnarayan John Muchilau Singh, and he was from Guyana, his family. Nice. Um, so I had an early introduction to Guyanese culture, like Guyanese food, pepper pot and stuff at his house, you know, and so mm -hmm. it was fun. It was like for me as a kid in a town that was just as white as white could get, um, it was really cool to, to have had that exposure. Very nice. Um, okay, good. Let's move on. Yeah, thank you for that. You know. um, okay, good. We're going to reflect. I don't know where we're at with time. I'm lousy with time, but we're going to reflect right now. Um, so just take a minute. You can you can you can talk about this, or you can write about it. Um, uh, we're going to talk about what we did. We're going to talk about uh, how it felt, and we're going to uh, talk about if there's any takeaways uh, for anybody. So um, I want to before actually before reflect though i want to just go back one time to that slide that has the uh let me just pop out of this for a sec 
go back to the slide that has your, um, yeah, this one here. That has the T-Vibe on it, right? Just, just so that you can see uh, those five elements. Oh, that's mnemonic device. Here it comes, T vibe. Yeah, beautiful. So, yeah, um, the breath and the alignment super important. It's the first thing you need, right? After that, you can play with all the other, all the other um, elements. So the first thing is: Are you standing up straight? Are you relaxed? Are you in a good posture? Right? Is your throat ready? Are you relaxed there? and uh, moistened, either water or tea, right? Um, and then you have to get your mind ready, right? And then you can uh, uh, adjust these other uh, four uh, categories, the tempo, the volume, the inflection, <laughs> or the enunciation. Yeah, good. Okay, um, just wanted to remind you of those before we go to the reflection. Okay, so I like to reflect using a, 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 a three-part model. I call it the triple A reflection. That's analysis, affect, application. So the analysis is pretty simple. What did you do? Uh, I read a sentence. <laughs> you know, I mean, it it's, seems stupid, that question, but it's really important to analyze, to break down what exactly you did. So what'd you do? When you came in tonight, you maybe assessed your mood, you typed something in the chat, and then you said your name, and then you read a sentence maybe, learned about a few uh, technical things about public speaking maybe, right? Um, so then the second thing is, is what did it feel like? Was there any anxiety? Was it weird? Was there a big moment? Was it something important happened inside you, right? What was the experience like? Uh, what was it like to go through it? Um, and then finally, what like what happened here today that might change what you do next time, right? What will you take with you and apply to your future experiences? I can't tell you guys, you know, I, I, I play a teacher at school and I get paid for being one, but I'm not. Life is your teacher, but it's only your teacher if you ask these questions of it right? You have to reflect on your own life in order to grow from it. So uh, otherwise, you just end up beating your head on the same wall. What reflecting does, it allows you to at least pick a different wall, right? <laughs> Maybe even to stop banging your head. <laughs> so yeah, um, any thoughts about that? You can go ahead and um, type it into the chat. I see some people are doing that. Uh, you can also... Um, uh, you could you could also just unmute and talk about it if you want to. That's fine. Yeah, could I uh, could I just go ahead? Yeah, please, Anthony. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, right now I don't I just don't feel like typing. Um, yeah, what did we do today? Uh, I think, like you had mentioned, you know, I assessed my mood in the beginning. Uh, I felt that I was pretty energized, just you know, just by seeing an old friend and and uh, getting to participate in this, this really cool event. Um, in terms of going through the experience, I would say that when we were reading the quote, I, I always get, it's funny because you mentioned that comedian who always throws up. Um, and for me, I always like, I feel like I have almost a like a cripple, like not crippling, because that's that's too extreme. Um, but I do always have anxiety before I, I speak or I perform or or what have you. Uh, but right when I get into that moment, it kind of disappears. Um, and then for the takeaway, I really, really enjoyed the mnemonic device. Uh, if I can remember it, it's uh, tempo volume, inflection, breath, and enunciation. Wow, that's it, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna use that in the future to, to like better plan. Also the, the markings on the paper of the speech, I appreciate them. Right on. 
Anyone else? Yeah, I'm um, down to go. Oh, oh. You, you can go. You can go ahead. Go ahead. No problems. No worries. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. All right. Um, well, today I will, as simply put, I attended a Zoom class on um, public speaking. We um, assessed our mood at first. We're in the mnemonic device. I'm definitely going to use that. Um, some exercises. Uh, I actually forget the lady's name, but apparently there's a very successful lady who throws up every time before she uh, goes on stage. Throughout the experience, I thought it was really cool. Um, motivated me to learn more, actually, about public speaking because it's something that I would like to do long term. What stood out to me the most was definitely the lady. I forget her name, but I always like hearing stories like that about successful people that actually struggle with something that you wouldn't think they struggle um, unless you really knew the full story behind the scenes. And then one possible takeaway is that I'll definitely use, uh, well, the, the honey with tea, I'll definitely use that. Um, the exercises in the slide, I screenshotted that one, so I could definitely run through those on the regular. And um, yeah, I don't want to drag out too long, so that's about it. No, oh, I, I appreciate that, Miles. Thank you for paying attention and um, actually being here, like totally present. Really cool. Of course. Um, first, I wanted to say I, you know, read the sentence. And usually when I'm getting ready to speak in front of an audience, usually I am pretty nervous. And then after a while, I'll start to um, relax. And like you said, you, you know, seek your audience out. I, I always look at the audience, look at the people, look around who's looking at me, who's doing that. Um, the takeaway, um, I felt good going through the experience. I really en enjoyed it. Um, my possible takeaway is try to relax a little bit more and um, maybe have something to drink beside me, like you said, tea. So that I learned. And I do enjoy um, public speaking and communication because I'm always, I always like to talk and I always like to communicate. Oh, that's so great. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that, um, mm -hmm. Felicia. I, uh, I noticed when you were talking about the tea, I, I remember thinking everybody you ever watch give a speech, there's always a glass of water next to the podium, yeah. right next to the lectern. Yes. <laughs> exactly what that's for. The, the larynx has to stay moist while you're working. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you for your reflection, Felicia. It was really cool. Thank you. Um, may I speak? Please, Brandon. Um, so what we did today was uh, obviously we learned about um, more about public speaking. Uh, I apologize if I, I've taken a little break, a, a little minute here and there. I definitely still do get uh, anxiety similar to what Anthony was saying. Like my hands get really sweaty. My voice sometimes shakes a little bit, and it's something that I definitely want to uh, work upon in the future because public speaking is very important overall because our species are so commutative. <clears throat> um, going through the experience was definitely something new, seeing as uh, everyone being stuck inside, there hasn't really been much to you know learn other than learn things about yourself. So I feel like this is just helping cement us more as people. Uh, what stood out was, um, sorry, I apologize. Uh, what stood out was uh, hearing about the, the actress Carol Channing. Um, my grandma used to tell me about how she would go to Broadway and she loved Hello Dolly. And uh, she loved, she used to take me to plays all the time. And uh, a takeaway that I have right now is just working on taking breaths, drinking water, trying to like stabilize myself. Yeah, the breath is definitely your friend in that moment, Brandon, for sure. That, that, that <laughs> moment. I Thank the, you. I thought it was. Yeah, use the breath to control it. Use the breath to release it, to control it, to be in charge of it, right? Yeah. 
Beautiful. Thank you for that reflection, Brendan. Very interesting. I loved your comment about um, how there hasn't been much to, 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 to do or learn except about yourself in this pandemic. I've found a, a great deal of introspection happening, yeah. yeah. Anyone else like to reflect or talk about what, what happened here today? We're, we're kind of getting near a, a, a quitting time. I don't want to abuse anyone's time boundary. I just want to make sure everyone had a chance to um, talk about their experience here. Uh, um, just to let you know, there is a masterclass on tap uh, here at the Knowledge Project. Um, Meg can speak to how long it is. It's either six or eight weeks, I think. Uh, so yeah, I just want five to Five weeks, oh, 10 oh. sessions. 10 sessions over five weeks, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. So yeah, so there'll be 10 classes. Um, they won't all be on public speaking, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but but I, uh, first of all, I just want to thank each of you guys for showing up. Um, it, it, it means the world to me. I, I really am. I'm here with my family, but I feel very isolated in this pandemic. And these types of interactions really help me. They help me stay sane. So thank you guys for being here tonight. And thank you for your input um, in the work we just did. Uh, I do hope you picked up something about bloviating without boring people um, or orating without bloviating, I guess I should say. Uh, so yeah, what the class is going to be, what are those 10 sessions going to be like? Well, that's dependent upon who signs up, right? I have a pretty diverse skill set around performing, around being an actor, around speaking. Um, and so, uh, I thought of these ideas, uh, would be where I would design the curriculum, public speaking, uh, memorization techniques, preparing monologues for auditions, uh, working the business side of show business. Uh, this is all around like, you know, these days, social media, agents, producers, casting directors, how to work that. Um, uh, creative writing, uh, which I'm doing a lot of these days, and speech writing, which is a really specific skill and one that you can earn good money doing, right? Politicians need speeches, and there's a lot of politicians, and there's a lot of words that they need to say, and they have to get them right. They have to get them right in lots of ways. So anyway, those are the ideas that I had. But again, it would really depend on who comes in and how my skill set or my experience can match their desire, their curiosity, their interest. So if you sign up for the class, believe me, I'll be in touch with you before the class starts to find out exactly, like you'll get a survey, you know, a Google form survey or something that'll let me know where, where you're headed, what you're interested in, what you need, what you want to do, what you want to get better at. 